Is this a good deal? Does it help the U.S. fiscal trajectory at all? It is a good deal. It's the same good deal <laughs> that, as you just said, that mm. they came up with about mm. 10 months ago. And so it's been just an inordinate amount of delay and drama in order to enact a deal that they agreed upon many, many months ago. That's what's kind of so dysfunctional about how this whole process. So taking a step back, absolutely, the Fiscal Responsibility Act is a very, very impressive first step towards improving the fiscal situation. It doesn't do nearly enough, but we haven't done anything to really improve the debt trajectory in basically a decade of this size. So that was really important. But they just can't take a win. And so it was like one CR after another, never getting in, in line and kind of getting the budget up and running. All of this drama that didn't really change the overall picture. And overall, if this sticks over time, it's going to save more than a trillion dollars. That's terrific. But for the people who are unhappy about it um, on the spending side, it is true. We will still be spending more this year than we did last year. In discretionary spending, in the total budget, spending is still going up. Our deficit and debt are still going up. There is so much more to be done. Good first step, yes. The amount of drama around it, ridiculous. Wow. Well, I'll tell you, so we go back in time, as Kaylee mentioned, to a deal that was struck months ago, and we know that we're entering a campaign cycle here. Everybody's leaving town right now, Maya. We're going to be running for re-election over the course of the summer and fall. Uh, so I'm curious your thoughts on 2025. The president's already dropped his budget. Did we just see the budget for next fiscal year that will reproduce itself in the form of a continuing resolution yeah. in yeah. October? Right, right. People would be forgiven for being confused that this budget that they are just about to pass, knock on wood, is actually for the year we're halfway through, not mm -hmm. for the next year, which is what we should be focusing on. And clearly, when you stop and think, what are they going to do for 2025, you realize it's virtually impossible that the budget process will work as it's supposed to. To its credit, the House Budget Committee already put out a budget. The Senate Budget Committee is not even going to bother to, again, and that's a problem. But even if they did, they wouldn't be able to reconcile the differences in a year or so. In, a, in an election year. So yeah, we're gonna be governing by continuing resolution again. Those spending caps though, from the Fiscal Responsibility Act were for two years. So there will be uh, there'll be tight caps again next year. I'm sure there'll be plenty of effort to circumvent them and get, them, get around them. But I think they'll probably end up sticking to those either in a CR that's flat or in a little bit bump up in appropriations. And then whoever's the next president will probably be the person who decides how things go out from there with Congress. Well, Maya, while we're talking about 2025, of course, Joe mentioned that President Biden has already sent Congress his budget for the next fiscal year. But the Republican Study Committee has put out theirs as well. And interestingly, they are calling for Social Security eligibility, that age, the retirement age, to be tied to life expectancy, also suggesting reducing benefits for top earners who aren't near retirement. I wonder, Maya, what you make of these proposals and if they ever really stand a chance of becoming reality. Yeah, it's a great question. So the RSC budget is really interesting. Overall, the budget is um, not to be taken seriously. Way too many numbers that really don't add up make sense at this point. But I would like to kind of pinpoint the ones that you just brought up, that in the face of basically everybody, the leading people running for president, the House Budget Committee, the president's budget, um, nobody's talking about how we would actually fix Social Security. And so credit to the RSC for saying, Yes, things like means testing, things like raising retirement age, not for current workers, but for, not for current retirees, but for future workers, those should be on the table. And they're absolutely right. Another thing that can also be on the table is raising revenues. It doesn't have to be just the spending side or the revenue side. It will probably have to be both, but it will have to be policy changes. And so, again, I think overall their budget is not, not to be taken seriously. There are many numbers that just don't make sense or add up. But those policies are courageous and important to actually have a discussion of, you can't wish away the problems of Social Security. If we don't do anything, they're going to be across the board benefit cuts. I'm very appreciative that some people are taking it seriously enough to get the discussion started. I'm sure they'll get beaten up for it, but it's the right conversation to be had. Well, Maya, we heard from Joe Biden on this. A statement from the White House begins with a quote from his dad that we've heard many times on the stump. Don't tell me what you value, show me your budget, and I'll tell you what you value. Joe Biden says here, we see what Republicans value. This extreme budget will cut Medicare and Social Security. Is that accurate? 
Uh, so they were talking about slowing the growth of benefits or cutting benefits down the road, not for current retirees, but in the future. But I'm going to push back on what the president said, because the president's budget yeah. doesn't address Social Security. So do you know what that means? That means he is supporting across the board benefit cuts to everybody of 23 percent. And that is the position of anybody who is not willing to put forth a plan to address okay. Social Security. So you don't have to like the When you say you cut Social Security, though, that's different than saying you're raising the age. Uh, is it not? That sounds like when you say cut, that sounds like you're cutting into people who have been paying into Social Security already. Right. So the RSC budget has a couple of different approaches. Some of them would reduce benefits. Some of them would raise the retirement age. All of them lead to lower benefits collected over your full retirement period. Um, and again, those are two of the reasonable policies we should be thinking about. And we could also put revenues there. We could also change the way we calculate inflation. But if you do nothing, which is what the president's budget proposes, you are tacitly endorsing across the board benefit cuts for millionaires and billionaires and also for widows. And that's clearly not a sensible policy discussion. I don't think you get to criticize somebody's plan to fix Social Security until you have one of your own. And I think we can all agree that we need to make changes to Social Security as quickly as possible to save the program from insolvency. And then we can disagree on how best to do it. But you can't show up with no plan and criticize somebody else's plan. So I think the president should come out with his plan to fix Social Security. And so should all members of Congress, instead of promising, they promise not to touch Social Security, which is what everybody's political promise is. But, but we know that that's not serious policy and it's not helpful for getting the program back towards solvency.